I'm Rosie Piller, but you probably knew that by now. This is the last in a series of eight videos about upgrading Oracle BPM Suite to version 12.1.3. There are just a few more things to do to complete our upgrade, and those things are the subject of this video. Recall that when we installed the 12.1.3 Fusion middleware infrastructure, we established a new Oracle home for 12c. This new directory structure includes administrative tools such as test to production utilities and composite deploy, compile, and package utilities. However, the domain was upgraded in place. That means the domain related components, such as the scripts to start and stop WebLogic server, are still found under the original domain folder. As you may recall, we reconfigured the node manager to be domain-based rather than host-based, so the startup and shutdown scripts for the node manager are here as well. Although the domain location hasn't changed, all of the domain components have been reconfigured to point to the 12C Oracle home. The specific tasks you'll need to perform after your upgrade vary according to your environment and which components you have installed. We've listed a few tasks that are pretty common. You may recall that in the Performing Pre-Upgrade Tasks video, we suggested that you preserve copies of customized scripts and configuration files. Here's where you'll use them. The reconfiguration wizard doesn't preserve customizations to scripts or configuration files. So for example, if your 11G startup scripts set the value of Java options, class path, or JDK version, you'll need to reapply those changes to your post-upgrade startup scripts. One quick way to handle this, new with 12C, is to use the set user overrides file to store all of your custom startup settings. For details, see the document shown on screen. You'll also want to tune your SOA infrastructure, applying the settings you determined during the pre-upgrade tasks. The upgrade process also does not preserve file ownership and permissions, so you'll want to review them and modify as necessary. Remember the background process that the Upgrade Assistant kicked off after upgrading active instances to upgrade closed instances? Depending on how many closed instances you have, that process might not yet be complete. The unmigrated closed instances won't be visible in Oracle Enterprise Manager and won't be available for reporting. At this point, you have two options. If what is most important is minimizing downtime, then it's fine to restart the servers, our very next step, even if the upgrade of closed instances has not completed. As soon as you restart WebLogic Server, the background migration process of closed instances stops. You can then schedule the data migration during off-peak hours and monitor its progress. If you would rather wait until the data migration completes, you can monitor its progress as we'll see shortly. Remember we advised you to purge unused data before starting the upgrade? Now you see why. The more closed instance data you have, the longer the data migration process will take. To monitor and configure the upgrade of closed instances, set Oracle Home to your database home, set the value of Oracle SID, and navigate to the folder you see on screen under your 12C Fusion Middleware Home. Then, when you run SQL Plus, supplying your SOA Infra schema owner and password, you'll have easy access to the SOA Upgrade Menu SQL Script, which displays the upgrade administration options. The first six of those options are shown here. You can use one to determine if the upgrade is complete and number five to schedule when the background process runs. For more information, see the Administering and Monitoring the Upgrade of SOA Instances section of the Upgrading SOA Suite and Business Process Management document. 
With the migration of closed instances handled, either by allowing the background process to complete or scheduling it when it's most convenient, it's time to restart our servers and make sure everything's working properly. First, we start the admin server. Recall that the startup script is in the domain folder, which is in the same folder structure as prior to the upgrade, but now points to the 12C Oracle home. We're using a node manager for each of our hosts, and during the upgrade, we reconfigured these node managers to reside in the domain structure. So that's where you'll find the startup scripts. We can now bring up the WebLogic Server Administration Console to start the managed servers. Notice that the console displays the correct release number. We can start the managed servers from the Control tab of the Summary of Servers page. We log in, navigate to the Summary of Servers page, then to the Control tab, select our managed servers, and click Start. And voila, our managed servers have been started. Then, after starting the Oracle HTTP servers that we're using for load balancing, users can start accessing the applications again. Here's a task from a process that was in progress prior to the upgrade and is now available for end users to perform. Finally, we can log into the Enterprise Manager console, verify that the version number is correct here too, and see all of the instances that were migrated from 11G, along with new instances as they occur. It should be possible to recover faulted instances. You can additionally use the Enterprise Manager console to verify that the migration of closed instances has finished. And with that, we can be confident that the upgrade was a success. We hope you've enjoyed these videos and we trust that they have given you a high-level understanding of the process and that they'll serve you well as you read the documentation and begin to plan your own upgrade project. As we have stressed throughout the series, these short videos are by no means a complete description of what you need to know. We urge you to read the documentation carefully prior to starting your upgrade. I'm Rosie Piller. Thanks for watching, and I hope your upgrade to Oracle BPM Suite 1213 goes smoothly.